Welcome to DOS Geek. Now, normally I don't do a lot of distro reviews, but Solus 4.1 really caught my attention here. And so I'm going to take you through some of the updates, but then I'm going to show you the actual Solus installed on the Lenovo ThinkPad Flex device that I have, which is just such a fantastic laptop, but it also has touch screen and a touch pen. So we'll see if all those functions work in Solus out of the box. Now we can see in the update, the general basic default applications get updated to the latest versions. You've got some updates to Budgie, Gnome, Mate, and Plasma version. Of course, I'm checking out the Budgie version in this review here. But what really caught my attention is down here in the hardware and kernel enablement. So you can see we have the latest AMD Radeon RX graphics cards, such as the 5700 and 5700 XT along with the newer AMD third gen processors. You got the Intel Comet Lake and Ice Lake CPUs and Nvidia GPU enablement all in here along with the latest Mesa drivers and new experimental ACO shader compilers, all of that great stuff built in. And that's gonna catch my attention with the distro more than anything else. I don't do a ton of reviews because there's not a lot of exciting things in a lot of iterative releases. Of course, it'd get me a ton of views because those type of videos get tons of views from people, but I don't find them all that exciting. But this caught my attention, which is why I'm breaking the norm here and we're gonna get into Budgie Solus, a rolling distro. Now, if we take a look at the menu, first of all, this desktop and everything just looks gorgeous. The menu is very familiar. You're gonna recognize, be able to use it right out of the box with your search functionality right at the top and all of your application categories on the left and your applications on the right. It's a beautiful menu, very easy to use. We go into budgie desktop settings. This is where we have tons of ability to get in there and tweak things like adding desktop icons, doing window tiles, document uh, font sizes here. Now, because there's no scaling in budgie Solus, well, there's two options for scaling, 100% and 200%. There's no iterative scaling in between you're gonna to need to change your font size a little higher. We also have all of the abilities here with Raven editing, Windows editing, editing, and the bottom panel that we can mess with here to add different applets and things as we want down to our panel at the bottom or create new panels and choose what items auto start. So Budgie desktop settings has a lot of cool tools and things for you to play with in there. Now we're going to take a look at display so I can show you that scaling thing I was talking about a little more in detail. You see, we only have two options, 100% and 200%. If I click on 200%, you're going to see in this case, it doesn't look so great, right? It kind of blows it up out of proportion. This is where you want to see 125, 150. That iterative scaling would be very helpful there. You've got your window tiling and shortcut keys and things that you can set up here, mouse and touchpad. You can do all of your basic settings and changes. The HP laser, of course, and the printers, I have to go back to it because it recognized my printer right off the bat, which not every distro does. Fedora, for instance, was a pain in the butt, and this printer works with everything. But certain distros out there cannot find it or use it. This one could use it right out of the box. No cups, no having to go find special drivers. It just worked. You've got options for Thunderbolt, Wacom tablets, and, of course, setting up your color and things. In addition, here's your file manager. Nothing to write home about here. It's called files, but you can see when we go into the menu system, when it's small like this, the menu doesn't really scale, which is kind of weird. So that to me was a little bug, but of course, if you just kind of pull the edges out and make it a little bigger, then you can get in here and see the full menu. So I think that's a little bit of a bug, a little paper cut they need to work out there. And you can see they're using files 3.26.4 as their file manager. Now, if we go into the software center, you can see that we've got all of these little categories here that we can get into with all the various software. Everything's categorized really well. You've got multiple categories like in arcade games and other things, but you can see we don't have icons for everything. So it's hard to see what these things actually are because all you get is text and a little green icon. I don't know what determines whether something gets an icon or not. I'm guessing it's the theme, whether they've made an icon for it, but it would be nice if Things like in the third party app store here all had icons for all the software that's available. Solus uses EOPKG, which in itself is a little bit of a paper cut because not everything is available in this package manager that they utilize here. So one of the cool things about Solus is, or unique things about Solus, it's not based on anything else. It's not based on 
an Ubuntu. It's not based on a Fedora. So because of that, they've got their own package manager, their own system in the back end. But again, you don't get as much software, but you do have SnapD pre-installed. So because of Snaps and Flatpaks and Universal Packages, you do have a lot more options in Solus than you would have before those Universal Packages really took off. So you can get a lot of your software that way. Again, I'm using the Lenovo ThinkPad or IdeaPad Flex. So this is touchscreen and also has a pen to be able to draw on things, which I'll show you here in a minute. This is the Raven menu, absolutely beautiful. And you can get back to the budgie desktop settings right there from it, right clicking on your desktop. Here are the options that you get, organize desktop, change background, open terminal. You also have little applets or widgets right there you can put on your desktop. But because this is a touchscreen laptop and we can turn it upside down and I'll have some instructions on in the brain dump section of how you can turn on ro auto rotation in your screen with this, but you want an on-screen keyboard as well. This is using onboard, which is great. And we can hide this when we don't need it and just click that little icon in the top right hand corner to enable it anytime we want and go into the settings and change that. Show you more of the touch functionality. We're going to use the pen here and I'm going to draw you a absolutely beautiful picture. It's just going to blow your mind, your imagination, because if you've watched any of my prior videos, I am very much an artist. Uh, people pay millions for my work. Uh, so this is using the pen and I'm going to draw a little penguin here. Absolutely uh, gorgeous tux, representation of tux. I'm so sorry, tux, that I'm ruining your image with my terrible drawing capabilities, but you can see the touch abilities or the pen abilities on this work perfectly. Uh, it's pressure sensitive as well. So the harder I push, the lighter I push, you can see that it changes the amount of ink going onto the page. And I'll change out the tool here to try a couple different things like an airbrush. So we'll add some color to this beautiful picture, this Picasso. It'll be out there on eBay for anybody who wants to buy it. A couple hundred thousand should pick it up feeling generous today. And I'll show you again the pressure sensitivity. As I press harder, you can see the line gets darker. As I go lighter, it gets lighter. So all of that functionality working out of the box on this laptop, which is fantastic in the Solus Budgie. Under sound settings is going to open up a panel. It looks really familiar to the GNOME settings panel. So now you have all of your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, backgrounds that you can choose from, notifications, search, all of your functionality here to change settings. This is one thing I, I really, to me, was kind of a paper cut is you've got all these different settings menus and things to get into to change different things. It would be nice to have everything in one area, but I understand why they've kind of broken, use, use GNOME in some areas and use the budgie settings tool for other settings, but it would be cool if it was integrated all into one, but you've got a plethora of settings and things that you can change here to your heart's desire all the little tweaks that you wanna do, you will have here at your fingertips. You've got sharing, so if you want to add things like you know integrated services or other online accounts, you can add those as well. You've got your sound here and you can change your different alerts, your power, your networking, your different devices that you can set up, just everything here. And we've got your details here showing this is an AMD Ryzen 5 3500U with Vega 8 graphics, which is, why I love this laptop so much. Going back in the software center, if you wanna add little widgets and things to your desktop, you can do that here, going under the desktop software and theming, then choose the desktop that you're using. In this case, it's Budgie desktop. And we can add little calendar applets, or you can see I have a little weather thing on my desktop. So you've got a little bit of choice of adding some additional items in uh, right through the software center. But again, be nice to see some icons and images over on the left instead of the green zipper icon, but can't have everything. Now let's check out gaming. So CSGO is what we're playing here. We're getting between 30 and 40 frames per second, as high as in the high 50s. I think it works fantastic with all the hardware enablement that they have in Budgie here. This is to be expected. It's an ultra portable laptop, but gaming's great on it. I think you could do light to medium gaming with no problem. And I think it runs wonderful in this. And you could lower the settings if you need higher performance out of the game, but very good stuff. So looking at Budgie Solus overall, some paper cuts. The store is limited software. I'd love to see more integrated universal packages in here like flat packs and app images to overcome that issue of EOPKG. But as far as how the store works, it works beautiful. The software that's there installs right. The store works great. Resolution scaling needs to be tweaked. They need some iterative 
in between 100 and 200 percent but you can increase the font size which does help on a touchscreen laptop like this even though it's only 1920 by 1080 for wins budgie is gorgeous you get all of the hardware support nvidia intel amd all the latest kernel and and features that are in mesa all there in this rolling release nice tiling options budgie desktop settings is nice right click on the clock to change the time thank you this is so important to me i hate having to go through a million settings to get that raven menu is beautiful for notifications there's so many great things in solace as an arch user i absolutely appreciate and love what they've done here it's not a just another ubuntu variation which is also welcome nothing wrong with that but there are a billion of them I think the team here has nailed what Solus should be perfectly with this release. So congratulations to them. Let me know what you think of Solus in the comments below. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And make them subscribe to this video.